And Ian, Ian is going to be, we were put in the same room for a regional conference. So even though we live in the same neighborhood and <laughs> teach in the Bronx, uh, we are just meeting. Um, so anyway, that's cool. Welcome. And he agreed to do the workshop in our Kumo space. So that was nice of you. <laughs> oh, always happy to try new things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a new thing. So who else, why don't you introduce yourselves to, um, to Ian? Hi, Ian. I'm Stephanie Loomis. I uh, live near Atlanta, Georgia. But... Hi, we're up, we're up in, the, in the middle of the garden. Hi, Ian. I'm Nikki Fain, and I'm an, I work at Lehman College. So That's where I went for graduate school, so we might have crossed paths. Jane Higgins was one of my mentors. Oh, great. Okay. And what, what school are you at in the Bronx? I teach at Fordham High School for the Arts in the Roosevelt okay. campus. Mm -hmm. Great. Cool. We're doing quick introductions. Matt? I work for the National Writing Project, and I'm based in Philadelphia. Super cool. Anna. Hi, sorry, I'm eating dinner. Um, my name is Anna Main. I teach English, ELD, and AVID at Berkeley High School in Berkeley, California. Very cool. My name is Natalia Navarro. I teach at Orange Cove High School, which is in the Central Valley of California. I'm originally from Venice Beach, so I haven't been back to the West Coast much these days, but I have a lot of friends all over the state. For Anna's sake, since you came in after I joined, my name is Ian. Um, Paul and I met because we'll be co-presenting at a conference uh, or presenting in the same session. Uh, and I teach English and computer science uh, at a small public arts high school in the Bronx. Great, thank you. Cool, so um, let's jump in, I guess. I don't know, um, as other people come, we can. Um, and But I did want to give some time for like, uh, how are you feeling, what's going on? Are you back in school? Um, I don't know. And I, I, I know you were like just starting up. Do you want to start off with that conversation a little bit? How's it going? Better start. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, was that directed at me? Yes, I'll let, let you swallow. Oh. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, no, I, I knew this. Yeah, it's all good. Um, yeah, we are in sort of a weird... Uh, situation where we're in the last week of our uh, our odd term so we have first period third period and fifth period so I've been on campus two days and I had two students the first day four students the the second day um, and then there's another cohort of teachers um, with students tomorrow and Friday but I will not be doing that are there like um, 20 people on the roll and only four are coming say that one more time how many people are on the roll is it that they're... Oh, that the class is small. It's like 12 kids. Okay. Um, but out of those 12, only five are, are opting to come back. And those are our English learners. And a lot for a lot of them, it's because they have family responsibilities, because it's Ramadan. They don't really want to be out and about. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just got my roster for next week. So I'll have, I think, one cohort of American Lit students. So those are like um, 11th graders. Um, and it's like, I think it's 11 boys and one girl, and I think 10 of them are, are white students, and most of them are uh, already doing quite well in my class. So we've been kind of grappling with, like, what is the purpose of coming back if the kids who we're trying to, you know, serve uh, are not able to come back, not willing to come back. Um, so it's been kind of, it's been a weird week. Um, Although being on campus has been really nice, seeing other uh, other teachers who I haven't seen in a year, and then seeing a few students has been it's been nice but weird. Anna, do they still want you to connect virtually with the other kids, or is that off the table now? Yeah. So so basically, what they've attempted to do is preserve the Zoom the Zoom day, like exactly as it is. It's just shifting. Hi, Janet. We're up here in the middle. We're teaching 9 to 12, 15. And then there's time for the kids to get to campus. 
um, and then we're in person from two to three thirty. Okay. Um, and so yes, we're so every all the grading attendance stuff is based off of Zoom. Um, and what has changed is our like our Wednesday like tutorial, um, like which is basically we would invite like the most struggling kids is now mandatory. Um, but there's no penalty for not going. Which is, so it's so all the teach so today the like the the big thing that everyone was sort of kind of up in arms is the right word, but people are just like, so what is the point if it's mandatory? But there, can you say something's mandatory if there's no penalty? Mm -hmm. Um. Anyways, so that's kind of what we're struggling with is how to support the kids who were struggling with distance learning but also aren't able to come back. No one really knows what to do. <laughs> Yeah. So we're not we're not doing the like I know like Chris's model and what a lot of other people are doing is like you're in person two days but for the whole day and then you like that kind of thing. It's like morning is Zoom time and then some a very small group of people seem to be coming. Yeah, but uh, just to say Chris Chris's school is back. They don't do any Zoom anymore. Yeah. Oh, okay. But they're small and have a big campus so they can do that, right? But when they were doing hybrid, isn't that what they were doing? Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. Well, that's that's better than what the schools here are doing, where they are on Zoom all day and have kids in the class all day at the same time. Yeah. Well, Welcome to my world. That's what I'm doing every day. How is that going? Who's showing up at your school? Um, it varies a lot by cohort. So a lot of the seniors were just like, we're about to graduate. We want to be able to see each other. We're going to come. There's a lot of freshmen who none of us have ever seen in person and not a huge amount of them are coming in person. So I my day ranges from my first period has two in-person students and my third period has 18 in-person students. So it's kind of all over the map. Um, thankfully, in classes where I co-teach, that makes it fairly easy to do a station teaching type thing of like Zoom is do or parallel teaching really. It's like you're gonna do this on Zoom and I'm doing this in person then we'll meet up at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but the hardest thing is when I, it's me and like there's 18 kids in the classroom and then 10 okay. kids online and I'm the only teacher and I'm just like, can I get one of you to be a TA and just like do something on Zoom with the other kids there right now? Yeah. Right. Um, so it's definitely not easy. Janet, you're back completely, right? Or in some way. We're back and let's see, this is our second week, I think. Yeah. So the first week we were back just teachers and everything online um, for a week. And then we're on our second week of in person. So um, we have three classrooms that are simultaneously teaching that we're piloting that. So we have an English class, a history class, and um, one other math that are simultaneously teaching. And then we have, um, we brought home back cohorts of kids that are struggling. I just got 10 more today. So I'll have 10 online and nine in the classroom. They're all, it's gonna be pretty similar to my ISP situation last year where they're all, um, they're all in different cohorts for whatever reason. So we have six entrances to the school or six paths. Um, so every cohort is, we're on different floors with different teachers, with different cohorts, with different teams. And so I'm lucky, even though I feel a little isolated, I'm in a, a classroom that has an outside door. It's a, one of our science classrooms. And so the kids come in and out through there. We have, um, temperatures checks in every room. We have, we have COVID testing every two weeks, um, for staff and students. And so that's caused some parents to not want kids to come, um, our, our numbers are small right now. We're hoping they're going to grow in the next couple of weeks when kids are back. Um, we've invited only students who were really struggling online. Um, I think we have a lot of seniors that are really feeling, I, and I feel like what you're saying. Is, we're up on the, in the middle. Well, okay. I'll be interested to see what happens in the next couple of weeks with that. So it's good. I mean, it's, it's it's definitely challenging. I'm thrilled to be back. I feel really safe being back. We're doing it that way. Our our district though is moving forward. My daughter's school is five days a week, uh, full time. Um, her, but they've done it a different way. So they have parents who want to be distance learning, have a distance learning teacher, and so she has all the she has a four or five combo with distance learning, 
and then the other kids are on campus. And so I think that probably is the most effective. It's really a struggle to have simultaneous going on. Um, my sister-in-law's, I have a lot of teachers in my family. My sister-in-law's doing simultaneous. And uh, she says it's really hard because she gets up, she teaches fourth grade and she gets up to walk around to help kids in the class. And then her kids on Zoom are like, where are you? <laughs> what are you doing? And so, um, uh, we've installed cameras at our campus. I mean, we're lucky to be a pretty small school and, and able to do, and we're doing it on a small level, right? So the, the rooms that have simultaneous teaching have video cameras in there so the students can actually see each other. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's a good solution for that situation. I just don't think a lot of schools can do that. Cool. Hey, Chris. We were saying earlier that you're on, like, except for Wednesdays, you're on regularly, right, with your classes? Yeah. So we've been back for uh, all the schools been back. It's a small school, about 500 students. We've all been back for about five weeks or so, I think. And, but some students remain uh, virtual. So I have a Zoom open for at most three people and then in the room at most like 20 at the same time. I want to give a quick check-in with Natalia too. What's going on at Orange Cove? We've been back, uh, I think maybe five, six weeks. Wow. And- um, By back, you mean you don't do any Zoom anymore or any? I don't do any Zoom anymore. But wow. only half of our kids are, are at school every day. So, so some days they're, so I teach all day in person um, to have my students. So the other half are at home and we assign asynchronous work that they're doing independently at home. And I'm feeling really good about it. I, you know, uh, we are being really safe about it and it's going well. Um, there, are, I mean, of course there's kids who are still struggling and they're still, you know, this is obviously not over, but there's been quite a few kids who you can see are just more engaged now and they're just kind of coming back to the school mode. Did I miss anybody? Any other check-ins? <laughs> I, so I did also want to give some room for, is anybody doing anything tomorrow for World Day? Is a uh, are you addressing the uh, verdict that just happened? Any kind of uh, check-ins on that that anyone would like to do? And then we can jump in from there to look at um, what Christina has with um, Writeout and some ideas I have around Youth Voices for integrating some of that. But yeah, I mean, we're go ahead. Photography class is doing Earth Day for sure. What are you up to? curriculum for Earth Day and now uh, anyway I'm tapping into that with those guys and then we're going to just do a little walk because it's springtime here and stuff's in blossom so it's right out yeah anyway yeah yeah for sure I was going to say um I'd like to see the AFT Earth Day one that might be useful for us to look at yeah I'll share that with you here all right you'll put it in chat yeah okay thanks but what are you going to do when you walk outside with them? Uh, it's photography, so we're going to, uh, I think we'll just focus on blossoms because, you know, why not? <laughs> and then uh, we'll see how far that goes. Like a walk can take a whole class depending on the kids or uh, we may come back in and we might use a little, try to whip up maybe just a little, who knows, something like a little poster or, or a little greeting card. Something like that. Do you um, do you focus like do you say blossoms or do you, are you doing like close ups or I mean do you take like a skill or something and Yeah, um, they're gonna work on uh, some really common things that we've been doing, you know, which is nothing new, but like close up, medium, long range, mm -hmm. you know, get whole tree, get some, get close up and then also portraits in front of blossoms. So we've been doing a portraiture unit as well. So you can't go wrong with a portrait, natural light portrait in front of blossoms. Those new iPhones take really nice portraits too. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> are they using their phones or are they using cameras? They're using, this class will be mostly phones. 
they can use a DSLR, they can borrow it from me, but. Oh, didn't mean to go there. I didn't mean to leave, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting that thing. Uh, okay. Chris is in Utah. He's in oh. Salt Lake City. Yep. Right in the foothills oh. there. Sorry, I got distracted looking for this thing. So let's just give this a couple more minutes of check-ins unless something big comes up here. Um, anybody else doing anything? Around the verdict or around Earth Day? I yeah, started all of my classes today with um, just using a jam board to kind of elicit, like, what are you thinking, what are you feeling, and what are you wondering about the verdict? Mm -hmm. um, and for some classes, that sparked, like, a whole period of discussion. They had a lot to say. For some classes, it was like, well, you know, we've talked about when George Floyd was murdered last year. We've talked about a lot of different political events in the last year and we just feel talked out and we need some space to not think about this and that's valid um and some other classes said you know we talked about this literally the first previous period in history so you know we're kind of mm -hmm. talked out as well so it varied from whole class discussion to like 10 minute check-in but um it was really interesting just to students were making a lot of connections to things they've learned in other classes things they've seen in the last year um for some students it got very emotional so my approach to that sort of thing is just been to try to create the space of like how much time, how much space do you want to fill with this, which worked fairly well today. Cool. All right. So, um, don't know for sure how to do this, but here's what I would like to do. Well, Christina, why don't you start by sharing that um, Google Doc? Or do you want me to share it and you talk? I can share it. Okay. Um. And then just to, just to indicate, um, at some point what I would like to do is, and just a couple quick announcements about this. Um, I've recently had an audit of Youth Voices done. I, I mentioned this very brief, quickly. Um, and the strong recommendation was to move the site from um, the, the host where we were to another host. And I immediately saw a dramatic change in terms of um, speed and, um, and efficiency on the site. So please let me know if you're seeing that too or not. Um, there's another step where anyway, we need to do a code cleanup and everything else, and, and there's there's a lot more to do. But we're working on um, having the site be secure and work better and more efficiently um, and to have some capacity to add others in. Um, within that, <laughs> Um, what I'd love to show you is that I've, I've set up a way for us, for you to take some, whatever ideas you have, your favorite ideas, and create a playlist, but to create a playlist on Youth Voices, and I want to show you a couple of prototypes like that, and I started to take some of what Christine is about to show you and make it into a playlist also on Youth Voices. So that's sort of the agenda here that I want to put out there. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Yep. So, um, so I was looking at something. So tell me, so let me just introduce the idea and stop again and check what we want to all do. But um, so basically at the National Writing Project, we organized this um, event in October called Write Out. And actually someone called it a festival and i was like maybe we should call it a festival because <laughs> it's really not like um it's like a whole but it's like if you go to like maker fair or something and you go to one tent and there's goats in that tent and then you go to another tent and there's like like um a uh, burning man you know like it's like that kind of you know like the 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 theme is making yeah different. 
Yes. Um, last this year, the you're going in and out a little bit for me. The, what? The, you're you were going in and out a little bit, but you're good now, I think. I know I can hear you breaking up now too. Okay. Well, keep trying. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. I think you're okay, Christina. Are you okay? No. Don't know what happened. Jack, Maybe if you, you turn off your camera, see if your audio works better. <laughs> okay, yeah. can you hear me? Yes, you're good. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so anyway, so we have this, this, um, we, we were organized this program in October with the national park service last year, the theme was stories by the campfire. And we, we put together a lot of these kind of resources, you know, in a festival style thing, um, that, um, we were thinking might be useful for people in thinking about interest-driven learning to support kids this summer. And we know that there's a lot of money coming to school districts and opportunities to sort of think about like, how can we, you know, in the, I'm, I'm saying this in quotes, you can't see me, but in the learning loss, quote unquote, area, how can we, you know, not just stick kids in more school, but actually, you know, um, support some interest-driven ways of engaging this summer and get outside and write. So Write Out is really organized around the idea that you should get outside and write, and then every year there's a theme. So Stories by the Campfire. So we were sort of trying to organize, support people in thinking about writing going outside, writing stories, being prompted to think and be inspired by nature or history or different things, and then being able to tell stories and hear stories and be inspired by stories. So I put together this document just to sort of... Which is in the chat, by the way. Um, to kind of walk through a little bit of a like activity first, where we all do a little bit of writing um, based on a couple of resources, we could even go outside and write and then come back online. Um, and then, um, look at some of the things that were put together for write out this last October and see if any of them would be useful to your programming, uh, this summer and thinking about supporting kids. Are, this you, summer, this are you trying to share by the way? Oh, I didn't share. Actually, screen share is, oh, no, I, I can do that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Or I can, whichever you prefer. No, I just need the Chrome tab. Okay. Now I can't really see you. Yeah, you don't need to okay. see us. Oh, now I can. Okay. <laughs> um, so I don't know, Paul, do you want to, so this, if we go here, I was yeah, suggesting okay. that we do this, like, just a little sharing, writing and sharing activity. Should we just, do people sure. want to try this together? Oh, you can't see that one. Hold on. We can see it. Can you see this, the um, slideshow? Um, open it. Or did you open it? Yeah, I opened it. So I have to stop screen share and then redo it. Because <laughs> it's tab by tab, I think. Well, you can't, you don't have to do it that way, but that's okay. You can. Okay. There so, um, so if everybody, if you go to that, um, PowerPoint, that slideshow, there are two videos here. One is, um, national park ranger McKenzie. She's at the Sequoia national forest and there's a, a, mi a couple minute video for younger kids, really. I mean, it could be older kids too, but it's it's definitely appropriate for, for younger kids. Um, and you could listen to that and do some writing. And then there's Dr. Easley here, um, who is probably more for older kids. 
Um, and both of them are like prompts about trees. So we could just spend a little time. If I show, I think I can play those. Should I do that? Okay. Or, yeah, let's, let's try that. So in right out, we had, um, we had a bunch of rangers do short videos that are kind of prompts for writing. So that's the Ranger McKenzie one. And then we also had storytellers and Dr. Easley is a hip hop, um, uh, artist as well as a forestry person. Um, so both of them are meant to sort of inspire and encourage writing outside. This is showing up, right? It looks yep. like it is. Okay, good. Um, and the videos. Oh, come on. Keeps going down. Uh, how do I get... Oh, I know what I have to do. Sorry. My bad. Okay. Let me know if you can hear it or if it's playing. It's not yet, right? Okay. You have to be in present mode. Maybe. So this one's about three and a half minutes long, and the Dr. Easley one is about the same. Yeah. Um, okay. Chris, Sorry, I guess I didn't. Chris may be right about present mode, but I thought. Here it comes. Nope, it didn't come. <laughs> How do you get to present mode? The present button. This button. That was me. It's about to become the backdrop for an unforgettable. Oh, really? Okay, I have the two open on my screen, Paul. Should I? I don't know if they'll play, though. That's the problem. But maybe. You go, go for it. Well. Yeah, if you have it, go play it. Everyone here is so good at this, and we're, we're like, <laughs> sorry. It's like a file. Okay, I start with hip hop. So that's when I hit first, okay? Okay. And... Standing out here in Congaree, if I focus on what I'm thinking, I'll start blundering. But when I look around at the trees, I'll start wondering. Not afraid of lightning and thundering. Notice me, love and forestry. It never bores me. It holds me, consoles me. And the other thing that it does, it molds me. What is hip hop forestry? It's when two communities come together in one. Everyone is an intersectional being. I'm not just one thing, I'm multiple things. My grandparents, taught me through gardens how to love the earth hip-hop taught me through music how to love people and share the truth forestry taught me how to respect the earth so hip-hop forestry to me the way it all comes together is we're bringing people who unnaturally are kept away from something that naturally they should be engaging with and we're bringing it together hip-hop is my religion because hip-hop is for everybody when i got into trouble in high school that's when i started writing poetry my grandma she was just like my light. When she died, I started writing poetry. I would just write my thoughts on paper. She kind of, kind of like I just didn't want to talk to anybody because, you know, like that was the hardest death for me. So hip hop for me, was it was a, it's a lifesaver. It was a teacher, just like the forest is a teacher to me. So hip hop does to me really what the forest does just over music and over beats. <laughs> it teaches me, it reaches me, I feel safe. And so hip hop and forestry together, that saved the world. The majority of my career, I've been involved in forestry or natural resources and diversity. So here I am now promoting diversity and equity and inclusion. It transcends everything. And to me, like diversity is beautiful because all it means is difference. And we need to learn to value the difference. Forestry has the opportunity to do it right and show the world how to do it right. Because we don't own this, but this owns us. The Southern forest, I feel, just so beautiful, but they seen so much ugliness. They actually do have a story to tell if we'll just listen. 
And we might even hear the spirits of people buried out here who couldn't have a, a stone, who didn't have a home, people who were lynched out here. And even though that's ugly history, it's beautiful to me because I am the dream of my ancestors. This is an opportunity for us to reconnect, reclaim, but also become rejuvenated and reinvigorated for love of the people. Cool. So, um, so I talked to Dr. Easley and he wanted, he, his prompt was for kids to go outside, to listen to that first, then to go outside and come and sit near a tree and compose near a tree and compose anything that they feel moved to and then come back inside and note how your body feels coming back in, inside and then to add that to your writing. So that was his prompt to go with his video. And then there's a video by the park ranger. Are you guys still with me? Do you want to? I am. I think we are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Go for it. All right. So hers. And then this is, um, you know, a little different in tone and probably would work with younger kids too. Hi there, I'm Ranger McKenzie, and welcome to the foothills of Sequoia National Park. For many and people, she's super cute. their adventure starts here <laughs> among the spiky yucca, the twisted and bent manzanita, and the fuzzy lupin. A lot of different plants and animals live here. This tree is a blue oak, and it's starting to drop its acorns for fall. Many animals, including bears, deer, squirrels, acorn woodpeckers, and worms, all snack on acorns because they are a healthy treat. Worms. <laughs> the hard shell protects a tasty nut. It stays fresh all winter. Now, one full-grown oak tree can drop over 10,000 acorns in a single year. Now, imagine if all of these oak trees dropped thousands of acorns in a year. Hundreds of thousands of acorns would cover the forest floor. Well, this does happen every two to five years when all the oak trees in an area drop a lot of acorns at the same time, it is called masting. This is good for the oak trees because they drop more acorns than animals can eat in one sitting. Now, some acorns will be left alone to sprout new oak trees where they land, while other acorns will go on an adventure as animals carry them off and put them away to eat later. Now, some of those animals will forget where they put those acorns, and those acorns will grow into new trees in a new part of the forest. But how does masting happen? How do trees stretching across a whole forest hundreds of miles work together to grow a lot of extra acorns at the same time? That is still a mystery. But scientists believe the secret may be right under our noses. Tree roots are covered in teeny tiny microscopic fungi that tie different trees together so they can talk to one another. Oak trees might say acorn, acorn, <laughs> now acorn to each other. But what about other kinds of trees? This giant sequoia tree towers over 250 feet tall. Many of these trees are over 2,000 years old. I wonder what these giants would discuss. Maybe someday you will come here as a scientist to find out. Until then, we can let our imaginations run wild. So here's today's writing prompt. We know that some trees can talk to each other through their root systems. What kind of messages might trees send to each other? Thank you for joining me today. I can't wait to read your responses. I encourage 
encourage you to explore the trees near your home as you reflect on today's prompt. Please send a postcard or a letter to Sequoia National Park, where you can share online by using the hashtag WriteOut. Cool. Um, quick reactions. What do you think? And then Christina will pick up again. I wish I lived somewhere that had more outdoor space. My students are always it's like, we have one courtyard with a single tree. <laughs> like maybe we could just do this, you know, on Fordham Road. But I, I really am eager to try to figure out maybe can I get them to the Bronx Zoo or obviously with COVID or Bronx Botanical Garden. Yeah, I think that's that's helpful. Um, anyway, uh, I, I'm, I'm interested in talking about that, but let's keep going with yeah, reaction. Yeah. Other thoughts? It reminded me of, um, I volunteered to teach some fourth graders coming up and I wanted to work some photography into it. So, um, I think I'll do something like this. Cool. It makes me think about, um, some of the, there's been a lot of discussion, especially with the model that we have for in-person learning, where it's really just like a supplement to what we're doing online. Um, a lot of teachers have been like, how can we, we have a huge campus, like how can we utilize outdoor space with our students who are coming in person? So it's got me thinking a lot about like, do, like walking out and sitting on a patch of grass and doing something related to this. I remember Chris, you were saying you were doing that this semester too. Yeah, yeah, we still are. Um, it's been a little brisk, but um, yeah, we've got some outside area. To, you know, we're using what we have and um, it's pretty cool. The kids really like it. I definitely want to share this with my science department. We did, I did a couple of these prompts with ELD in the, in the, when, in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, with some of our students and we didn't mail them in. They were, they weren't having any of that, but <laughs> I wish, I wish they would have, but um, we had some great writing with it. And um, I really want to share the hip hop one with my science department. I think that would be, there's a lot of discussion doing a lot of social justice discussion right now. And I feel like a lot of the comments that he made in that um, will definitely tie to some of the work that's going on. So even Google Dr. Easley, he's at Yale now. He's, there's a lot of, he's got a lot of content online that's really interesting. Okay, that's good to know. So Ian, I just wanted to get back to, um, cause part of Write Out, we really try to think about, I mean, I'm in Philadelphia, so, you know, it's not, it's like not unfamiliar to have, you know, we have luckily like the two, trees on our street are like in front of our house <laughs> and neither of them are ours so like our neighbors so we get to enjoy them but um you know there's lots of areas that don't have trees so often thinking about like how to support thinking about the outside even if it's not green and you know like obvious places where to sit or to you know like trying to try to navigate that there are some of the prompts that are more about you know, the built landscape. Um, but I don't know, I, I'd love any ideas too that would feel like they'd support your kids in writing outside, you know, um, not to put you on the spot and just welcoming those kind of. Thoughts. Yeah, no, not, a, I, I mean, something that I've been trying to figure out how to do, and obviously it's not the best time for it due to the pandemic is just having Kind of a nature writing field trip because the botanical garden is within walking distance of our school oh yeah um, that's there you go that's nice and, you know <laughs> and there's like you know a big forest in it it's like one of the last old growth forests in the oh, area forest, yeah um but obviously that's that's our school hasn't been i don't think anyone's taken a single field trip anywhere right now for sort of obvious reasons um but something i have thought about is I mean, it's not a great substitute, but in the same way that I might be sort of, I've talked to a lot of students who play video games as a form of escape, you know, mm -hmm. to sort of like go to a fantasy world if you're stuck in your house. Yeah. Um, and something that I've always found students often enjoy is like, you know, writing from images, right? So it might be a situation of yep. obviously write out in the ideal sense is you're leaving the space, you're leaving the building, you're kind of mixing it up. But um, we, we had a unit uh, in the fall about, 
that involved using um, like an overlay on, I think it was an overlay on Google Earth showing different graffiti around the world because mm, um, nice. we had a unit that was grounded and looking at street art. And one of my colleagues is super into street art and had made all these pins of like, oh, you can go explore this area, explore this area, explore this area. And we were fully on Zoom and the kids really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, cool. Obviously, it's not the best substitute for going out of the building, but it's something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. That's cool. Um, and, and I'll just add that the New York City Writing Project has a relationship with um, a park ranger at um, Gateway National Park. Gateway. Yeah, and we're 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 gonna try to you know as soon as everybody can get their head around it, do for first for teachers there and then figuring out how to get other kids there too. Mm -hmm. But that's a bigger trip for everybody. But um, it's a little bit of a just a hike, right? Yeah, I mean it's an all day kind of adventure. It's yeah. just a, it's not yeah you have to get transportation, so it's a big deal. But but it's worth it. <laughs> I, I've done it um, with, with students, and yeah, it's it's kind of an amazing experience there. But um, Christine, do you want to say what's next a little bit, and then I want to get into what I've done on Youth Voices, just to because I want to open that up for folks, as because you can all you can start building there too. Does that sound okay? Like yeah, every yeah. everybody's on the dock. I think if you're not. I, I, I've, looks like everyone's on it. It's available there. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just, I created this document. I'm going to share it and sort of some ideas that people might have so I can like add your ideas into the mix if you don't mind. But um, uh, we have a network wide National Writing Project call on Thursday. Um, and so I think people are looking for ideas for s summer. So just like, Oh, creating a document where we can start sharing ideas. So if you have ideas about how you might use any of this, I can write down the things that you've said already and you can add them in here. And um, yeah, I'm just sort of have it. If you scroll all the way down, you'll see like a bunch of, I linked a bunch of the resources that were collected last year. So there's a range of different things available. Um, and um, to Ian's point, actually what I need to add uh, there's some virtual writing marathons that people created. Um, there's so what's kind of cool is that you can like create a marathon that's all virtual, and so kids or like there you create these certain points and you do a writing marathon, but you don't actually leave your computer, um, but you you navigate. So I, um, so there was. Uh, the Cayuga National Forest and the Kent State Writing Project did a writing marathon for kids and they were just in school, but they got to like explore the forest and then to write from that exploration. So anyway, there's some nice designs for like writing marathons and different events like that that can be fully virtual, but really take you into new places. Totally mind blowing article in um, for me. Uh, in Atlantic Monthly this this month about um, whether or not we should give back the national parks to Native Americans. Ah, I'd like to look at that. Okay. Right? Um, it's a it's a really interesting. I mean, there's no practical way to do that yet, but it's certainly a, a great thing to think about. Um, like, how did we get these national parks? And there were people on them already. And you know, anyway, so. It's yeah, it's we're interesting. Working get, yeah, we're working to get more of those stories for this year's event. Um, uh, folks in uh, Nebraska and Elk in Montana are working with um, Lakota community leaders. So I don't know. I think that's a really I, I, yeah. I think it's important. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. All right, l let me let me um just uh sort of, uh, I'm looking at the time, and I, I, I want to share this if I can. Thank you, um, everyone. Well, and thanks, Paul, for this. And you'll see, yeah. Um, we're... Thank you. Good stuff. Thanks. So this is what I've done with it. <laughs> so this is at Youth Voices. Does everyone see that? You do, right? Yep. Okay, good, good. 
So this is at youthvoices.live slash write in write out or share out, right? And it's just sort of a prototype, and I just I took the language on that document and kind of thought about it for students. You'll see, um, right? Um, and then there are activities. I've only created the one here so far. Um, here's what here's what's different about this playlist than the LRNG playlist, if you're familiar with it. Um, everything, this sentence here, as you finish each of these endeavors, your work will be collected in the timeline of your profile, right? So they don't have to s submit it, they don't have to turn it in, it's sort of automatically there in their profile. Um, I should have said, and Harry jumped in here earlier, I should have said, one of the, one of the things that I'm, one of the use cases that I'm working toward is that Harry has an upward bound class that starts in July and goes through August. But any, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see if we can develop materials for Harry and then, you know, brought, anybody can use them then, right? So this could be something that Harry could use. So then you click here, this opens up, and this first activity is here, right? Here's Ranger McKenzie, and here's her video, right? In the video. And then the only difference here is that they click here and create a doc inside of Youth Voices. They use the write out tag, and then they find other people. Um, do you want to show some of the details here? Um, I'm trying to integrate the habits of mine so that these habits of mine, responding with wonderment and awe, gathering data through all your senses, creating, creating, imagining, and innovating, and then thinking interdependently because we ask them to respond to others as well. So trying to think about how to take sort of the write-out curriculum and build it into a playlist here is what we're after, or what we're thinking about here. Um, other thoughts um, as you've seen this? Um, please interrupt me, in other words. Let me show you one more, and this is one that you're familiar with, and then I'll show you how you can all start building them yourself. Set the tabs up, maybe I can just do that. Yeah, so the profile setup that Anna Main mainly created and helped us create is here as well, right? Um, I would, I, 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 I've said to Harry, this is where your kids can start, right? Um, these three activities are set up. The first one is to personalize your profile, right? All the details for how you need to do that. Anna's video is here, and then the habits that are connected to it are here. Um, and then the activating their journal, their first journal entry is suggested and recommended, and the habits that are connected with that. And then, so as each of these open, the other ones close, right? So then, here's the step-by-step -step for doing your first comment on Youth Voices. So that's sort of the, what I want to sort of, want to say, this is what you would do first as you uh, jump into Youth Voices, right? Um, and the, the final thing I'll do here as part of this presentation is I've set up this playlist template, and you know if you, it's a youthvoices.live slash playlist playlist template. Um, it's you can then just go in and replace the image, replace the video, kind of think about how you want to organize it. Um, and if you don't, you probably don't know this yet, but any page on Youth Voices, in the upper right hand corner, there's a copy to a new draft. So you can take this template, or you can take the other, let's just say this, you can take this template, hit copy a new draft, and then start working um, to build something there. So, 
I would love for people to start collecting their curriculum. You know, you keep doing it however you do it, but the, the more we could do it together here, the, you know, the richer sharing that we'll have together. Where's the template, Paul? Sorry. Yeah. Um, it's youthvoices.live slash playlist template. Oh, I see it. I'll yeah. put it in the chat. So quick reactions, thoughts, ideas. <laughs> um, I really, I like the format of this better than the, the document thing we had before. Um, mm -hmm. Like the way the video embeds and the way the little sections collapse and expand, I think that's cool. My question is if I um, went through the copy to a new draft, where maybe this is a dumb question where does that page then go and how do i find it again yeah um it's up under pages um okay. as opposed to docs okay yeah gotcha. right <coughs> there's a one of the things on my list is that the search there doesn't work terribly well for pages i don't know why um so you can change the URL, and I would recommend doing that, and then just keeping track of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, if you, if you lose it, I'll help you find it. <laughs> um, uh, but but just as just the um, the sort of the block system that that you would use to build this is also the same block system the students use to build they could use to build their stuff. So you're doing it here in WordPress and learning how to use blocks to build the curriculum. We'll help you teach them how to do it too. Right? So I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I think uh, one advantage is that, you know, you've got the curriculum and then you also have like the connections, you know, that the conversations that students can have with each other. I think that's nice to have those things side by side or as close in proximity as they can. Because oftentimes, you know, like, and we've known this for years, like these, the posts kind of drop in and it's like, oh, I can kind of gather what's happening here. <laughs> um, but uh, to have maybe even, you know, exemplars uh, on that page as well. So that like, if I'm, looking at uh, Natalia's assignment, and then there's actually like some live examples there that we can look at. That's the biggest thing. I, well, one of the biggest things for me is like, do I have examples of what it is I want them to do? Because I can give them directions, but sometimes they tune me out a little bit. But if they have <laughs> uh, you know, some examples, it seems like, oh, okay, we're doing that. Okay, I can do that. Yeah, we could easily put the those in the sidebar. The question is like how many and yeah, but sure. Yeah, almost, I guess what I'm saying is uh, there could be a string, well, if you could do two things, top two would be curated. Like these are the ones I want you to look at, bottom two, like a separate block, if you will, of just like <laughs> most recent. Yeah, we could manage that. It's a good idea, cool. So, the idea of this also is that um, these pages, anybody here can edit them, including students. Um, they can edit them as well. Um, so these could be built collaboratively. I don't think you can be on it at the same time, but they can be built collaboratively. Um, and you know, corrections made, and we can we can work together on it as well. But. Um, I want to get Harry started, uh, <laughs> and um, the other the other one that I've started to build is um, oh sorry I don't know why I, I forget um, what would be next sorry uh, I'll look that up in a second any other kind of quick thoughts or ideas about what we're doing with this. I hope, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to 
ask, is the long-term goal for this to kind of have a library that writing teachers can just sort of be like, hey, I'm looking for X or Y or Z. Let me see if it's on here. Yeah. I mean, if you go to youthvoices.live slash ELA, that already kind of exists. And then it, um, but it, many of those go out to LRNG. So I'm trying to figure out how to, I mean, this year we've been kind of building how can we, how, how can we make it work in Youth Voices? One of the difficulties with, I think, with LRNG has been the whole turn stuff in process. So that, you know, if I, if I create a document for the write out, that should automatically go to my profile and then later I can put it in a portfolio if I want to, but I don't have to like do something extra to turn it in. It's easily, it's easily findable that way. But Ian, have you seen LRNG? There's tons of curriculum in there, so. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, if you looked at that, then you can see like this community has been de developing all this curriculum, but it's a little bit in this other format. So that's what's awkward. Where is the link? Yeah. It's a, there's a, if you, right at the top of Youth Voices, there's a playlist um, link. And that takes you to to that. Anyway, there's a lot of sort of cool stuff, but it's oh. like over there, and as Paul said, not integrated into Youth Voices. So, and then it the, has to be graded over there too. It has to be assessed over there too. It's a little laborious. Um, the the other sorry I don't know why I didn't remember it, but the other the other sort of first thing to do probably is they write and record three true three true paragraphs about yourself. Um, but and so as I'm rebuilding that, I'm thinking about how that can also be a way to introduce one of the questions that um, both Anna's students had and Don Reed's students had and others is like. Why is there docs and why is there, um, you know, uh, posts, discussion posts, and what are the different, and when do I write on the profile and when do I write? So trying to think that through a little bit and introduce those different modes of writing is useful, I think. So with, with the, with the profile. So that's sort of what we're working on. Um, So yeah, um, and we invite you to jump in and mess around with it. He, uh, one example I'll give is that Jessica uh, Hernandez Spear, who I work with, um, has been building for a while this curriculum around the Day of the Dead, and so she's going to build a playlist for that. Um, and so, like, if you have like a hobby horse that you'd like to play with, you know, go for it. <laughs> So thank you for that moment to show you that. And um, I hope we can continue working together that way. Um, and you can, you can see as, as they come up, how it goes. Any sort of final thoughts here tonight, though? Thanks for, thanks for creating that playlist. That'll be cool. Because those are a couple of different avenues the kids have said they wanted to go they've expressed this week they're like we want to do this we want to do this we want to do this with youth voices they came up with some cool ideas and so i might take their ideas on saturday and like work with them about okay if you were going to design the lesson what would you design you know and like play around with what they have and see what they come up with it'll be interesting to see what they get i think they'll have some cool ideas but it'll be neat to have a template like you did it give them it'll give them a starting point and it'll help them organize maybe their thoughts. And like, if I have this template, how would I want it to look if I was to interact with youth voices? So yeah, that'd be cool. And Paul, can I keep working on that, that write out one? Oh yeah, please, please do. Can I, can I share some of those resources, Christina, with the kids on Saturday? Oh yeah, please. Um, that document has more down at the bottom. Do you see all that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
I just wanted to uh, usually when I throw stuff at them like that, they will immediately point out things that they like. So that'll be pretty cool. But cool. Yeah, that'll be yeah, good. Yeah, feel free. Okay. All right. I want to thank you all. Um, I around. It's great to have you all here. I also get like six emails with people saying, "I really, really want to come, but I'm so overwhelmed." So I get. I I know what it's like out there. I get it. Um, so thank you for spending the time here tonight. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Oh, thank remember you. you you get to walk down. And don't cross the exit, but hit the exit button. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see everybody. Bye. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hit it with your hit the red button with the your cursor. Uh, <laughs> okay.